from Hell's Kitchen in New York City. It's the Cube on the ground at Serverless Con. Brought to you by Silicon Angle Media. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman with theCUBE here at Serverless Conf in Hell's Kitchen, New York City. Uh, our first time doing theCUBE here, happy to welcome back to the program a multi-time guest, Mark Nenenkoven, who is the Vice President of Cloud Research at Trend Micro. Mark, great to see you. Yeah, thanks for having me, great to see you, Stu. All right, so, so Mark, repeat after me. Security, Security is, is everybody's, everybody's responsibility. responsibility. Yeah. So, uh, you, you did a keynote. Yes. Talking about security, and, and I love, you know, I didn't get to see it in person, but I feel like I was there because we had the Twitters and the commentary yep. and stuff like that. Uh, so, security, it's a non-issue, right? Serverless, it's all set, like containers and everything before, everything's secure, right? Yeah, uh, as you know from looking at the headlines, we do security really well in the IT community, so you can sleep well at night. We don't have to worry about anything. <laughs> um, no, unfortunately, it continues to be a challenge, and the, the point of the keynote yesterday was sort of give the state of the nation how we're doing in the serverless environment, um, and the good news is we're doing well in security uh, for serverless designs, but the bad news is not through any individual or purpose action. Um, simply by just building in these methods, we get a huge amount of security advantages. Yeah. Um, but we, you know, we, we can do better. All right. So, so Mark, what, what can we learn? I, you know, it, it's funny. I, I, we see these th kind of repetitive things uh, go on in the industry. It's like, oh well, I'm going to just use SaaS. I don't need to worry about security, right? Oh, I'm going to go public cloud. They'll take care of it for me. Yeah. Now, container, serverless. Um, it, it feels like we have the same trope <laughs> over and over and over again, right? We do very, yeah. very much so. Yeah. And uh, one of the things I called out yesterday was actually highlighting how the OWASP top 10, which is the 10 most common vulnerabilities in web applications, have not really changed since 2000. 2010, yet we didn't have even the concept of serverless in 2010, but we're still making the same mistakes. SQL injection, still the top mistake that we've been making for the last decade. All right, so we're talking about security. Let, let's step back for a second. So mm -hmm. I, I, I believe a lot of the people watching these interviews are going to be like, uh, uh, serverless, I don't get it. I love the uh, Cloud Guru folks have the t-shirt, yeah. uh, the update of the uh, the cloud one, there is no cloud, it's just, you know, <laughs> somebody else is, uh, owns the computer, now it's, yeah. I, I forget the full thing, but it's, yeah, you know. somebody else, oh, it's somebody else's uh, ephemeral execution environment that lasts for milliseconds, okay, something along that. So, you know, what, from your standpoint, you've been talking to a lot of customers, yeah. you're speaking at the, 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 this conference, you know, the what and the why of serverless. Yeah, so serverless is really that sort of, um, I won't say conclusion, but the logical next step of cloud where you start to realize when you move out of your own data center where you were doing everything and you move into the cloud and go, okay, well, half of the responsibility is on Amazon or Google or Microsoft or whoever. Um, and then you go, well, hold on a second. Why am I even managing Windows or Linux? What advantage is that to me? I, I make widgets or I sell shirts or whatever. And so you move up into something like containers and you ask the same question, go, well, why am I even running those? Serverless is that last step on the current line of going, I don't have to run any of this stuff, I can just write code that's directly tied to my business. Yeah, and I like how you said it's the next step. I, I think yeah. back to science, and it was like when we found the atom, everybody was super excited, and then like, oh, there were protons and neutrons, and they're like, oh my gosh, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, and electrons and everything, and then they're like, oh, and then there's the quark and the, you yeah. know, everything like that, so the digger, the, the further down we deep, but what is the value of that? So, you know, I, I think, you know, we went from, uh, you know, the server to, you know, virtualized environments mm -hmm. to microservices to containers, you know, why is that important? What, what's the business outcome that people are getting uh, when they get excited and start playing with serverless? For sure, so there's two, there's really two main points for me. Um, one is that you have a direct tie between IT and the business, both from uh, performance as well as cost. So now you can actually say that application can cost me a dollar ten per transaction, and I normally make nine dollars on each transaction, so this is good, let's continue to invest there. So there's finally a break down between the separation and you get that unity with the business and, the, and IT. And the second is accessibility. And because there's far less um, infrastructure and plumbing to worry about, um, you have people who aren't traditionally viewed as developers, more the business analysts, starting to actually write solutions um, that are far more uh, in, directly in line with what you want to do as a business. All right, uh, one of the things I, I liked seeing in the keynotes was you know, what can we do today and what can't we do today? So, you know, web applications, great. You know, IOT, things like, you know, the Amazon button or the Amazon Alexa, yep. you know, all leverage that. Um, 
what are some of the cool applications that you've seen, you know, leveraging serverless today? Uh, yeah, so a lot of cool robots. Um, so a friend of mine, Ben Kehoe from iRobot, gave a great talk on it. Um, a lot of their stuff leverages that. And I mean, I'm always I'm a nerd. I love robots. Um, who, IoT who doesn't like robots. Exactly, right? You know, we welcome our robot overlords yes, here at, ab the, at the Cube. So. Absolutely. <laughs> um, you know, and we all, if they're listening, and when they process this, you know, thank you for your service. Um, but yeah, it's uh, there's a lot of great things where we're crossing out of just the digital world into the real world because we can connect these things up with the advantage of serverless. We don't have to build out a huge infrastructure. If you need smart lighting, if you need smart appliances, all the IoT world, it's all serverless. Yeah, uh, so, so you know, I, I'm going to bring up this word that, you yeah. know, has, has some weight to it. Uh -oh, you know, enterprise. Yeah. So, you know, companies, we, we're, we're talking, you know, the cloud is being reused for, you know, whole businesses and everything like that. Is serverless for, you know, uh, it's web and robots and, you know, cool toys and everything like this. Um, where do you, what, what, what are you seeing, you know, what, what, what are the limitations and, you know, does this become, you know, a predominant, you know, operating model in the future? Yeah, it, it, there's a lot of hesitancy in the enterprise because they're not familiar with it, but realistically, any enterprise today should have a very simple sort of fall down model. When they're building something new, start at serverless. If that doesn't meet your needs, put it in a container. If that doesn't meet your needs, build a server. Again, you want to do less work. Um, the challenge, again, is comfort level. Um, serverless breaks a lot of our tooling, yeah. so you need to learn a lot of stuff. But it's definitely where enterprises should be looking today if they want to get ahead. Okay, and, and, and Mark, what, what advice do you give to, to companies today as they, they think about security uh, across some of these various environments? Uh, well, you, I mean, you led the cheer at the start. Yeah. It's security's everybody's responsibility. Um, from a security practitioner's side, a point of view, we've done ourselves a disservice in isolating ourselves in teams and not talking to people. We need to be educators within our organizations to help people understand what they can do. It goes all the way back to the mythical man month. It's easier to squash a bug before you ever write it rather than when it's deployed to millions of people. Same thing for security. The earlier you're on it, the more people are looking at it, the better off you're going to be. All right, Mark, I want to give you the final word. Uh, takeaways, you know, the, the, the event isn't done, but for people that aren't familiar, where do they get started, you know, and, uh, uh, you know, where, where, where should they dig in uh, for serverless? Yeah, there's a ton of great content here. So this is the fifth serverless event. Um, a lot of the old talks are up on uh, YouTube. A Cloud Guru has done a fantastic job pulling this community together. Um, check out all that stuff. The major uh, providers, all of them are here. All of them have excellent entry-level projects um, to help you get rolling. And really, that's the best way to start. Fire up the console, start building something. Why not? All right, Mark, really appreciate you joining. Thanks for sharing uh, with the community here, our community. Look forward to seeing you at many more events. And thank you so much for watching theCUBE.